There's nothing unusual about convicted criminals declaring their innocence, but Lavaglio and Stafford are supported by a large body of lawyers and politicians. There's a wealth of evidence which the jury never heard, more than enough to justify a re-examination of the background to the case. The last resting place of Angus Sibbert, victim of murder, can be found in the Newcastle Cemetery of St Nicholas, a grave that was once distinguished by rich floral tributes from the world of gambling, nightclubs and entertainment. There are those who say that a way of life was laid to rest here too, remembered around Tyneside as the hard days of clubland. Angus Sibbert was a flashy wheeler dealer, who ran fast cars and two mistresses, and who was a celebrated big spender in the clubland scene of the northeast during the money-raking days of the mid-sixties. Weighing 14 stone, reveling in the good life, Sibbert was reaping a silver harvest from thousands of one-armed bandits. It didn't last. He was shot down at point-blank range at the age of 33 in the new year of 1967. His friend and business colleague, Michael Lavaglio, was arrested, charged and convicted of the murder. Another associate, Dennis Stafford, was convicted too. Sibbert's short, flamboyant career had earned him the title of the Fruit Machine King, but he wasn't even remotely regal. The real sovereign of Clubland was his boss, the head of social club services, a tycoon called Vince Lander. A Londoner of Italian descent, Lander was born Vincent Lavaglio, and he was Michael Lavaglio's elder brother. Shortly after brother Michael was convicted of the Sibbert murder, Vince Lander left the country. Lander was part of an era that all began with a single piece of legislation. Of course, there'd always been gambling, but it had been mostly governed by that well-worn phrase, for amusement only, which meant that you could win your stake back, but precious little else. Then, in 1963, all that changed, and this became the passport which set men like Vince Lander well on the road to riches. Section 36 of the 1963 Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Act licenses gambling for profit so long as it's part of the legitimate activities of a club. And if there's one thing that the North East had plenty of, it was clubs. So for one or two people, it was to be one big jackpot.